What's up, Profiteers? Lost Profit here, back in the test world with yet another tutorial. First off, credit where credit is due. First of all, for this tutorial, I need to uh, thank Direwolf20 for his ultra informative mod spotlight video. And number two, I need to thank Wizball1 on the um, FTB forums for his little guide, which uh, I'm using a combination of those two sources of knowledge plus what I've learned on my own to today show you how to work the new Mistcraft system. All right, so the first thing you need to do is find pages. Pages can be found a couple of different ways. First of all, you go to certain villages, you find this guy. This is a Mistcraft villager. It kind of looks like a Thomcraft villager without the hat and also without the fancy symbol on back. So yeah, if you right click him, he will sell you pages. He's selling Autumn Woods Biome for three emerald. It's a little expensive. But yeah, this village here does not have a Mistcraft villager hut. But if you find a villager like this, chances are that village has a Mistcraft hut. Are you sure? Yes? Okay. Anyway, yeah, if you find it, the Mistcraft hut has a chance to have some random pages in it. There's uh, another thing called a Mistcraft Forbidden Library, which you can find lots and lots of pages in, but I'm not going to run around looking for one of those right now. But that's basically what you want to do is you want to find Mistcraft pages. And now I'm going to go over here and I am going to get into uh, my stash of th uh, stuff here. And I'm going to get out the stuff you're going to need for the uh, Mistcraft age writing process. All right, let's see. We need that and that. First of all, you are going to need a writing desk. Now, if you're playing on a server, you're going to want to be extra careful where you place the writing desk. You're gonna they place like a bed does. So if you want them up against the wall, you're going to have to go and place it parallel to the wall. Okay? And then we need a bookbinder. Now, uh, let me go in here and turn off creative mode. Get into NEI and uh, show you the recipe for the writing desk. Oops, I'm in cheat mode. I need to turn that off. There we go. Recipe mode. Ah, oh, what did it do? It took me back to creative. No. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, here, nah, options, now, done. I should not be in creative mode. There we go. All right, so we got the writing desk. The writing desk is rather simple. You need a glass bottle, a feather, and five wood planks of any kind. Now, for the book binder, it's a little different. We are going to need, where is it, where is it? There it is. The bookbinder is five wood planks and three iron ingots. Pretty simple stuff, right? Okay, so now we're going to go back into creative mode and get out the stuff we need. First of all, what you are going to need is an ink vial. Ink vials are quite simple to make. Let me uh, get out of creative and show you that. Ink vial, there it is. Ink vial are two ink sacks or two ebony drops from bees and a bottle of water and that will get you one ink vial. You're also going to need uh, some paper and some leather. Let me get back in. Paper is real simple. We all know about paper. Paper is just three sugar cane in a row and then you're going to need some leather which is got uh, acquired from any cow. Now, uh, one of the things you're going to want to do, let me get out a crafting table here so I don't have to leave creative mode again. I don't want furnaces, no. All right, let me get out a crafting table here. Now, you're going to want to craft something called a notebook. It's just three leather in the shape of a bowl, and that will give you a notebook. Notebooks are what you're going to use to store pages and also to uh, transfer your pages from the writing desk to the book binder. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get things together here and I will be right back. All right, back with the next part. Here we go. I got myself a creative spawn notebook, but uh, for your purposes, you will want to have a notebook with all your Mistcraft pages in it. You put it over there in the left side of your writing desk and as you can see, it will tell you it's a creative spawn notebook and all your symbols will be in here. That is pretty cool. 
Now what you're going to want to do next is you're going to want to put your paper up here, like so. Your ink vials over here, like so. And you see your inkwell here will fill up. Now you take your regular old blankety blank notebook and put it right there and you'll notice this field turns gray here. Now what you, what you can do is you can right click on your different symbols and it will copy them into the notebook for you. I'm just going to right click on some random symbols here and it'll put them in your notebook and you notice every time you right click on a page it'll take away one paper and take away some of the ink vial. Okay? There you go. So that's how you copy pages into the notebook. So uh, let's get down to how exactly you want to write a notebook. Okay, now that we have all our stuff together, we are ready to begin writing an age. Now, again, I want to thank Wizball1 for his uh, comprehensive guide on the FTB forms. You can find the link in the description below. First of all, you are going to want to uh, put in your biome arrangement. Now what a biome arrangement is, is you pick any biome page or pages, biomes being that it will tell you. Uh, let me see here, let me find one. Is there one up here? Alpine biome, autumn woods biome, beach biome. Now depending on how many biomes you pick, I am going to pick, uh, let's pick three. Okay, there's three biomes. Now when you have more than one biome, your biome controller is going to be one of the uh, multiple biome biome controllers. So let, let's find one here. Do, 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 do. Let's. Uh, you can pick tiny biomes, tiled biomes, large biomes, huge biomes, and small biomes. We're going to go with huge biomes for this one. They are going to be absolutely massive. Now, if you only want one biome, what you would do is you would use down here in the S's the single biome controller which is right here okay that you must have those and you must have them first okay next up is terrain generation now you need a terrain modifier let's see if we can get one of the let's get one of the, let's get flat okay so you put in your flat terrain modifier okay now if you want something cool in there like say you want to put um, you want to replace all the water with lava or you want to replace all the stone and dirt with an ore block right before you put in your terrain modifier which is here flat you will want to put in your modifier page so if you want terrain with uh, let me let me see what what's quick I can grab here let me see there where's diamond ore there it is diamond ore if you want to replace all the stone with diamond ore which is absolutely cheaty then you would um, put in your uh, terrain mod modifier there. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Next up, you are going to want to put in your sun and moon modifiers. Now these are tricky. Sun, moon, and stars modifiers are necessary for stable age creation. So let's go down here. First, you want to put in your position. Okay. You want to put in your position. So we are going to have it at noon. Noon. And then, uh, let's see, we want to put in a length. So we're going to go down all the way down here and go to zero length, which will keep it where it is. And then we're going to go back up here and get normal sun. Now you can do the same thing for the moon, too. Uh, you want to put in your position. That's your starting position. Your length and then your uh, actual celestial body modifier. So we are going to go end. Where is end? End. End. End is up in the E's. End or star field. End. Right here. See end? This is the opposite of noon. Okay? That's the trick. So we're going to go to end. We're going to go to zero length down here. And we are going to go to normal moon. Where is normal moon? There is normal moon. And then you are going to want to modify your stars, okay? So we are going to... I, you really don't need a length modifier for the stars, I don't think. Hmm. Let's see, you can uh, do, do normal stars, I guess. Just throw in the normal stars. I don't think they have to have a... a, a position modifier so 
we're going to go with uh, the stars rotate as well. So, well, since we're doing an eternal day, it doesn't really matter, but we're, we're just going to throw normal stars in there. Okay, there's normal stars. So that's our celestial bodies, you know? You can do normal stars or dark stars, and these are only mandatory if you have a moon at night. Now we need a weather controller. We're just going to go ahead and throw in no weather, because I do not like weather. There. Weather controller. You can do normal weather, fast weather, slow weather, eternal weather, or eternal rain, snow, storm, or no weather, which is my personal favorite. Now what you need is a lighting controller. You can do standard lighting, or you can do bright, or you can do dark. Now let me find the standard lighting controller. There it is. This, this has no effect on mob spawning, by the way. The only thing that has an effect on mob spawning is the sun. So your standard lighting is just, it's just going to be how bright your overall ambience is. If you pick bright, then you will pretty much be able to see at night. Uh, if you pick dark, it's going to be kind of moody. But if you pick standard lighting, it'll be just like any other Minecraft world. Okay, so that's it for the mandatory stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's get into the optional stuff now. You can add uh, extra generation objects, which are cool. If you want to make a world that can uh, get to the um, get to the end, you add strongholds. You can also add dungeons, which is pretty cool. Where's dungeons? There's dungeons. Now you can also add crazy stuff. Like let me get down here. Glowstone crystals. Let's throw a couple of those in there. All right, and then you can add also uh, crystals, which I will get into here shortly. And we'll throw, we'll actually throw a couple of those in there too. And then that's that's uh, stuff like that. Now you can also add instability symbols. Like uh, let me see, where's where's meteors? Meteors, 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 meteors. Where are they? Oh, we're we're gonna throw mine shafts in there too. Where's mine shafts? There it is. Mine shafts. See, meteors, that's an instability symbol. And now, the trick with instability symbols is the more instability symbols you add to a book on your own, the more stable the age becomes, which is really, really weird. But then again, it works out, and I guess, you know, it would have the opposite effect. So, it's all good. It's all cool. So now uh, you can add your sky colors and your fog colors. First of all, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick a color. Let's, uh, let's go with green here since we're right here. You pick green and then you pick sky color, which is down here. Sky color, where are you? Where are you? There you go, sky color. Okay, and I have to answer a phone call, so I will be right back. Okay, I am back. Answered my phone call. All good. Now, uh, you can also do the colors thing for fog color and cloud color. You put in your color modifier first, and then you put in your sky color, fog color, cloud color page, and that will uh, take care of that. Now, at the very end of the book, this is extremely helpful here. It's not required, but you know what, I'm going to go ahead and call it a requirement anyway, because if you want a completely stable age that is actually the age you want, there it is, the clear modifier symbol. We're going to throw that at the end of the book right there. Okay, that's how that works. That's how you write a stable Mistcraft age. All right, now we're going to go over here to the bookbinder. What you do is you take your leather and you put it right there. Okay, then you take your notebook with all your symbols in it, and you right click it on this gray area right here and what it'll do is it'll throw all your pages in in order this will allow you to create the descriptive book so we're gonna call this demo age you can give the age a name in that line right up there and then you take out your descriptive book and then uh, there's a couple of different ways you can do this now let me get out some stuff here book stand we can do the lectern. Uh, let me see, where is the lectern? There is the lectern right there. And then you can also do portals. So you want to get this blue portal crystal right here. 
And then uh, I'm just going to grab eight of these. There we go. All right. So you can use your book stand like so. You can use your lectern. You can put it on anything. We'll just put it right here. And then uh, we'll put the lectern on top of it like so. And then we're going to knock that out. And we are going to build ourselves a portal. Now, a very simple portal will be four high and three wide, thus creating a one by two space big enough for you to walk through. And then we go over to our crafting bench, and this is why we got eight other crystals got put out, taken out. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. talking today is fun. What we do is we lay out our crystals very similar to a chest, and it will give you a book receptacle. What you do is you slap that book receptacle on there, and then we will demonstrate putting them on different thingies here. Here's your, see, demo age, the name comes up. And then to take it off the book stand, you hold shift and right click on it with an empty inventory slot in your hotbar. You can also put it on the lectern, shows up like that, get it out the same way. And then you can right click on the uh, portal book receptacle and it will create a portal like that. And of course you can take it out the same way. And uh, notice, you can change the color of the portal just by putting the book back in. That's uh, pretty neat. We're going to go with red, and we are going to jump in and see what our age looks like. Here we go. This may take a moment because we're generating. Yep. You'll get stuck at first, but uh, don't worry. The age will generate around you. And uh, it should look pretty cool. So let's see what we got here. We can already see the green sky. That is pretty neat. So, we are waiting. We are waiting. Remember, this is generating an entirely new Minecraft world, and it is a full world, so generation is going to take a hot minute. Here we are. It appears we have uh, landed in an autumn woods. There's the crystal formations, and there are the glowstone formations that we chose. We are in an autumn forest. It's going to be a little laggy. Remember, we're creating a whole new age here. And the one thing I forgot to do, and I'm kicking myself for it, is I forgot to make myself a book home. Oh, dear. <laughs> so I'm kind of stuck here, aren't I? Oh, well, this is a test world, and we can have fun with it. So we'll just do an all-new world thingy here. I can probably get myself out of here. That's not really going to be terribly much of a problem. But if we look at our map, the biomes are just ginormous. The crystals are everywhere. And there's the uh, other forest we picked over here. And let's fly over there and see what we got. See, it still generates all the normal things you would find in a normal normal age. So there's a birch forest that we picked. Yep, that's pretty cool. And, of course, the biomes are just wacky large. So you're going to see all kinds of stuff. There you go. All right, so that's Mistcraft Age Generation in a nutshell for all y'all, my friends. Hopefully you had an uh, easy time following this tutorial. There's my stone platform. We're going to go right back here and land. So while I get myself out of this crazy age, I am going to say stay safe, play hard, and uh, hope you had fun uh, writing the Mistcraft Ages. Thanks to Direwolf20 uh, and to Whizball1. Your links are down in the description below. Take care, everybody.